Bonnie Gani, everyone. This is Professor Amin Ra, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, uh, former city councilman for the city of Compton, former Compton College Board of Trustees, and from, former Compton Unified School District uh, Board of Trustees. We want to welcome you to the Conscious Corner, and that uh, we hope you enjoyed this presentation this evening when we discuss what's going on with the election and how. It affects Black people and their participation and their goals and objectives of the first Black woman to be nominated by the Democratic Party to be president and talk about his, her choice for vice president, as well as some other issues that we face with regards to our political agenda. Second, I want to give praise and thanks to Brother Rashki Mascani uh, for providing this platform, Conscious Corner, on uh, the CNN uh, Community Education Network uh, platform, which it comes on every Wednesday at uh, 6 p.m. And we have courageous discussions on various issues. We want to welcome Brother Machinda from deep, deep South, Louisiana, and let us know what's going on in the South. And we're going to get right into it because it's very important. We also want to recommend, uh, recognize Brother Ronnie Roberts, you know, for for his uh, courageous thoughts and practices, deep thinking, uh, analysis all the time. And, you know, and so we're going to have a lively discussion about uh, what's going on with the election. But first, we're going to get started with good news, good news and uh, what we call um, uh, uh, generosity that is expressed by Black people. And uh, and I'm going to start, Machinda. You got any good news, Machinda? About black people, yeah. Uh, well, they had down here. I told you a while back, uh, this little country town, they got their first black mayor brother that's uh in the history of the city, a hundred and uh, over a hundred years. Uh, finally got a black mayor, but anyway, of course, I announced that a while back. Well, anyway, he um. So there was an opening for a police chief, the one that was white, you know, white folks had it for years. And uh, so uh, he went on sabbatical on a kind of a medical leave. And uh, so it was, it was uh, the position was still open. So they had, you know, some kind of interim guy. But anyway, after the, the guy finally retired, so the, the mayor was able to choose a police chief and uh, he chose the, the first black police chief in a hundred and ten year history uh of the you know of of the city and uh so that was a a big thing you know because of the fact that you know the history of law enforcement in these parts uh you know now you got somebody you know and, and I know the guy personally you know so I think he'll uh do he was a re he was actually retired you know he had worked many years as a you know he moved up through the ranks and things like that but uh as far as uh, restoring, uh, you know, faith in the police, you know, we are, you know, you got people say, hey, defund the police and do this to the police. But, you know, of course, you know, people call the police when they need them. And, uh, you know, we understand all the reasons why we don't trust them sometime growing up. You know, I know for myself, you know, there's various reasons. But anyway. So I just want to announce that they, they, you know, for the first time ever in a hundred ten year history, they got a black police chief. So it looked like things can be moving in the right direction for, for you know, in these parts. So that's one thing on a local level. Um, you know, other than that, I can't. You know, the the governor, he's he's constantly, you know, he's uh in rare form. So that's nothing good to report from that area. All I can say is uh. You know, there's a lot of learning and a lot of waking up down here. It needs to needs to be done. But, um, you know, I think it's moving in the right direction. You know, it, it's going to happen. You know, what I mean is, uh, you know, just people becoming more conscious. You know, I think there's a evolution going on that of, of folks that are starting to, you know, because of the, you know, social media, things like that. We've had our... Um, We've been having our our experiences with negative infiltrations of negative energy and negative information, but eventually, I think a lot of that wears down, and 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 so hopefully, uh, 
you know, you, you know, people start, you know, using it and start, uh, I'm, I'm starting to see, you know, people's minds change, you know, just through conversation, you know, the conversations that I've never had that I hadn't had in the past with people, you'll see like people were sleep, you know, they're not really conscious of what's going on, you know, but more and more people are, are, you know, the conversations are starting to change in terms of being, you know, pol you know, politically mindful and, and uh, among other things, but that's it for now. All right, then, man. Good news. People be saying elections don't matter, but you got your black police chief. That's OPB. Uh, deliver justice to the people. Brother Ronnie Roberts, the main man from Oklahoma. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Roddy, we can't I'm hear good. You. I'm good. That's I, good. How man. you doing? I'm, I'm raw. I'm so glad that. Uh, how's your health, my man? That's uh, everything's good. I talked to Sydney. My first questions. question is, how's your health? Oh well, it's, hey man, it's, I I make it good. I make it good, no matter what. <laughs> you know, you know, because it could be worse. As long as I can get here, but brother, how's Oklahoma? And is it any good news? Well, it's 102 degrees here today, and I'm still standing. <laughs> um, uh, unlike California, um, Oklahoma, um, as a, I think one of our cats is from the south. Unlike California, everybody, even poor people, have air conditioning in Oklahoma because you have to have it. So you go yeah. from one air conditioned venue to another. And just try to stay. I get out, what, got what? walk at six thirty this morning to beat the heat. What's the temperature down there? It was one hundred and two today. Right now Ooh. it's at eight. At eight oh nine, it's ninety seven. Wow, but Boy, that's I, typical I'm this time of year. And you know, you think those yeah. temperatures are really extreme, and they are, but it's yeah. you know, it's not All that right. big a deal. Okay, Rasha Key, what about you? Any good news? Yeah, yeah, I just want to uh, keep sharing a few things. Let me share the screen with everybody. And uh, this is because uh, Brother Machinda mentioned, you know, people starting to seem like they're starting to wake up a little bit, which is always good news. But let me share this with you guys and the, and the people you know, they could probably get some good information from what I'm about to share. So check it out. You have on the website, our website, Community Education Network. As you can see, we own right now this show right here, Conscious Corner. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. we have Dr. Sharita Yassid, ND. She's in Ghana right now. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be with us tomorrow, and it's going to be 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm. She's taking out her time to talk about vegetarianism, which is excellent, you know, to help people further understand the, you know, the quality of how you eat. And mm -hmm. so we came up with a collective of podcasts. So if you go to the, you scroll down the page and you see Black Conscious Podcast Collective, we have 44 videos of five different five different podcasts that focuses on bringing excellent information, educational information. Uh, Brotherhood has three different ones. And of course you have the Conscious Corner and the CN show, and then you have Level Set show. So some good information coming and we're gonna build this collective so we can get more information out to the people. So that's my good news for today. Well, that's excellent, excellent. Just want to share a few things. First of all, I want to give praise and thanks for the example of Black excellence by uh, Simone Biles and uh, all, all her athletics uh, putting us on international stage as the greatest uh, gymnast that ever was in, uh, defying gravity and levitation. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing to win those medals uh, and representation, although they try to say it's United States representation, and they run around with the flag, but it's really black excellence that's going on. And also all the brothers and sisters that's up there in the track doing their thing. And, you know, it, you, you know, it's beautiful from the standpoint of demonstrating to the world black excellence in athletics and their ability to, uh, you know, demonstrate to the world that black people are on the set. 
Second, I want to praise the people that's standing up for uh, Sonia Massey, the sister that got shot in the face by the white policeman. Uh, the people, if it wasn't for our history of struggle, they never would have arrested that white man. You understand? Uh, they arrested him, charged him with first degree murder. And it's because of the history of the George Floyd, or the Michael Browns, and the, uh, all the times we tore up cities and things of this nature. So they're being proactive. But if it wasn't for the people who struggle to uh, let them know we're not going to take this, they never would have acted as fast as they did. They'd be still talking about they investigating and things of this nature. So we want to praise them people uh, for that. We want to give uh, accolades to Brother Charles Barkley for donating a million dollars to um, Spelman College. Uh, you know, Charles is Charles, you understand? But at the same time, at least he gave some money to the uh, <laughs> to the people of that. And then we want to praise the Palestinians who are still resisting under all the oppression uh, of, of the bombs and the killings of their people, they're still resisting uh, to give up the hostages until uh, uh, the, uh, America and Israel pull out of their land and give them a homeland. That takes a lot of strength and sacrifice. Remind me of Martin Luther King, who led people into battle and they got beaten, hung, and assassinated, but they kept on marching. So ain't no way we're going to turn around. And I agree with the Palestinians. You, you don't just don't want the, the ceasefire. You want them out of the occupied part of the land. And of course, they're assassinating along with America, giving them the intelligence, talking about we want peace and we're trying to negotiate peace. And at the same time, giving them the bombs and the uh, uh, and, 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 uh, material to kill the people. You know, that's the, what Malcolm said. This is not democracy, it's a hypocrisy. So I, I, I admire people that resist. I mean, I, I think about all the people that you know, during the Holocaust of enslavement of us that kept on struggling to get free, kept on struggling to get free, not just for themselves, but for us in the future. And we stand on them shoulders. But that's, those are just a few things that I just wanted to share as far as good news and uh, generosity by Black people, helping Black people. It's a beautiful thing when you look for good. The white man going to put everything bad on TV. He never talk about himself. He don't say he came out the cave, that they were raping their own daughters and stuff like that and eating them and all that type of stuff. But, you know, he always talking about how great they are and how beautiful they are. But anyway, and then we want to uh, also uh, give praise and thanks to uh, Sister Sheila Lee, who passed. Uh, she's an outstanding legislator, and they just had her services. And every, everybody that could go went, uh, and she's out of Texas, but she was uh, a, a really a, a daughter of immigrants and, and worked her way all the way up to Congress. And I, I, I met her, as I said, I think the last time on the show, back uh, in 1995 when she first got elected. And, uh, and we took a picture together, and I... I always uh, thought she was one beautiful uh, sister that really stood up for Black people. She helped write the reparation study. She uh, also uh, 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 helped uh, bring forth Juneteenth. Uh, she's uh, she just a, a courageous sister. But anyway, we're going to get down into our discussion. A lot to talk about with regards to uh, what is going on and how we should react as Black people to the movement of uh, Kamala Harris as vice uh, from vice president to being a Democratic nomination to president. We want to also uh, uh, talk about her, her her choice for vice president, <laughs> as well as uh, the various issues that we face from a political standpoint. I specifically asked for a deep thinker to come on and share his views because he always come up with courageous deep thoughts and great courageous questioning. So Brother Ronnie, how you see this election and what do you think about uh, uh, Kamala as a, as a Democratic nomination? Um, I think Kamala was uh, first into a position that in my mind, she probably knew was coming all along, but her reaction to it and the way she's gotten off the ground and her steadfastness of her message, and particularly her 
not being lured in by Donald Trump's trap statements and racism and low IQ and all of that madness. She's just, she's like, like Obama was doing, was rising above all of that crap and just staying on message and staying on, on point. Um, I'm, I'm proud of the sister. I didn't, I didn't, when she initially ran for president, I wasn't a supporter of hers at that time because I didn't think she was ready. Uh, I thought the same thing about Obama. And, but the moment in itself, not that they didn't have the credentials, not that they didn't have the tools that the um, Caucasians running against them had, I just think that in the case of a, a Black or a person or a person of color, even a Hispanic for that matter, or an Arabian or an, a, anybody that's not a, an ethnic white person running in this country is literally, as we have had to be as, as men, better than the equal white man that we're running against. So I think they've all stepped to the challenge. Obviously, she's eminently qualified. She was a DA in the largest state in the country, uh, more than twice in San Francisco. Uh, came up under the tutelage of the great Willie Brown, one of the great Democrats, flawed man in himself, but a lot of great men, most great men are somewhat flawed. We all are, we can all relate to that. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I told um, some of my students, my um, about my fifth year in Long Beach, which would have been about 2005, um, you know, before Obama became president, so what do you think will really fix this country, Mr. Roberts? And I said, well, in my mind, a qualified woman, white, black, or Hispanic, mm -hmm. been in office for two consecutive terms for eight years. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we are, all of our presidents with the exception of Obama have been Caucasian men. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a pissing contest with them to see who's got the biggest nuts. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, there are, their worldwide diplomacy is all about we got a big stick, so we're going to do things the way we want to do them. Uh, they've always slighted countries of color, as in Africa, and exploited them for their resources. And they're still doing it to this day. Mm. The Democratic and Republican Party, for that matter. Mm. Democratic and Republican Party, down the line of beholding the big oil. One of the things that I always think this insane is how uh, people can blame the current administration for gas prices. Well, mm -hmm. gas prices are not controlled by the president of the United States. We're so uninformed on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The president of the United States has zero to do, I mean, zero to do with gasoline prices. But mm -hmm. simply because the big oil gives millions of dollars to both sides. Mm -hmm to protect themselves. Same thing with Wall Street. Millions of dollars come from Wall Street. Who is supporting, um, where does the money come from for both sides, big tech, Wall Street? Getting off on that, getting back to Tim, getting back to her selection of Tim Waltz as a running mate. He checks a lot of boxes. He's a safe choice. Um, I think a lot of people wanted Josh Shapiro, the, uh, the governor of Pennsylvania to, to get that slot simply because Pennsylvania was such a big state. Well, he can't guarantee, no vice president can guarantee that he's going to bring his state over to that side. It's just mm -hmm. impossible. No vice president has ever been that powerful to do that. But mm -hmm. you do need a man who, number one, can deliver the message. Tim Walsh has been delivering the message from day one. He's a very eloquent speaker. Like you and I, Ra and and and, and Ross he's an ex, he's an ex teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teaches me. Uh, that's what you want to start with that. But he's an ex teacher. He's an ex administrator. He's a union man. Mm -hmm. He marched on the picket lines. But more so than anything, he's a white man in a state that is gone for the Republicans for the last four or five elections, mm -hmm. and has won in deeply rural counties. Mm. That's what our ticket needs. You know, 
I think Kamala has energized the base. Mm -hmm. Young people, people of color, and particularly women, i.e. and white women for that matter, because of the abortion issue. Mm -hmm. She's energized the base. But what we need, what we need to make a difference in those four to five key states that will determine the election. You know, New York and California, automatic Democrat. Mm -hmm. The whole South, automatic Republican. The, the three to four or five states will decide this election. Mm -hmm. Minnesota, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Those are the three. Yeah. He's attractive in all three because he is attractive to blue collar white men. Mm -hmm. Number one, those are the difference makers. Mm -hmm. Who votes in these elections? White folks vote. Mm -hmm. folks vote. I don't know, a lot of people are not aware of this fact, but Democrats almost outnumber Republicans two to one in reg voter registration in this country. Mm -hmm. But Republicans, 80% of them are going to go vote. Mm -hmm. Only half of us will. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. when you're talking about presidential elections, everybody knows this. those three states. Mm -hmm. Ohio's another state that's in the balance, you know, but that's all of the states that will that will determine the presidential election are Midwestern states, mm -hmm. heavily unionized states. Mm -hmm. He's a union man. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. And so you know, that's my take on him is he's a safe choice. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks wanted Shapiro. Shapiro is a Jewish man. Uh, mm -hmm. Shapiro is just a recent governor. Shapiro does not have a wealth of executive experience. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been a two-time governor of Minnesota. Tim Walsh has been. He's a four-time member of Congress. He's mm -hmm. a leader. He's an executive. He's done it before. He has a track record. Josh mm -hmm. Shapiro, who I think was probably the, the, the biggest competition, was just recently got to the executive level where he ran anything, and he never has been a member of Congress. And doesn't mm -hmm. know Washington like Tim Walsh does. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, and I, you know, this may offend some people. I always thought that the the great choice or the best choice from an intellectual standpoint would have been Pete Buttigieg, the transportation mm -hmm. secretary. Mm -hmm. But that savage five miles animal that is running on the other side would have slaughtered him just because simply because he's gay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would have uh, turned off a lot of blue collar people. The country is mm -hmm. not ready for a, a gay president and vice president at this point. As mm -hmm. for that matter, they're not ready for a black woman to be president. But the times, in my heart, I actually truly believe she has a really good shot to pull this off. All right, that's good. That's good. But that's dependent on us getting out to vote. Mm -hmm. And us doing something out of our comfort zone to make certain we can get people out to vote. Like one of my biggest things I've been asking people here lately is, I want to contribute in some sort of way. I want to send them some money. But I sent Obama a hundred dollars twelve, fifteen years ago when he first ran. Mm -hmm. I my 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 inbox, my text, my emails have been flooded with Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris now. Now Tim Walsh emails and texts telling me to give money to all these different sites, and I don't know which one to give to. Uh, uh, a friend of mine told me to, to give money to black men for for Harris. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody you give your money to, you're going to be on a mailing list, and they're going to share this mailing list with every Democratic organization in the country, and you will be inundated for life. I want to know how I can give money cleanly anybody here has any any way to do that other than to give it to somebody else to give to them mm. or yeah, I don't know we have some things going on going on here in Oklahoma where people are getting together I can remember when Obama was running for president a friend of mine um I'm trying to remember his name he taught at UCLA black guy and we had a, a shindig at his house over in LA and uh, everybody paid 60 bucks a piece of $120 a couple. And um, we gave money like that and they put it together and, and he did it. Um, his name was Lance. What was Lance's last name? Uh, Dr. Lance. Ah, four years out of LA, I can't even remember mm -hmm. my friends. But uh, 
it was just a beautiful event. We all came together in his home. He hosted it, mm -hmm. and everybody gave the money, and he pretty much got it to the right people. Mm -hmm. But things of that nature where I, where I mean, we as individuals, raw, we go, we got to do something to help the slave. Oh, yeah, you're right. And, and then not only us, all of our followers and everybody who even thinks about coming on this show, we need to do something to help the slave. We don't get to that. We don't get to that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think Tim Moss is a great choice. He's very eloquent. You know, one of the one of the things that has really pissed off Trump in the in the run up to the campaign right now is the fact that everybody's calling him and JD Vance weird. Where did that come from? Tim mm -hmm. Walsh. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. been an eloquent speaker, and he's been doing this long before now. He was mm -hmm. one of Biden's campaign co chairs, so mm -hmm. he's in the mix. He's he's me with the with the Obama camp. He's also has inroads to the Clinton camp. Those two camps are absolutely necessary to pull this young lady, this wonderful young lady across the board. All right. Let me get right back to you, Machinda. Sure. I, 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 what do you think about the election? Uh, yeah. I, I'm just listening to uh, Roberts. Yeah, that I agree with a lot what he's saying. Um. You know, it's, I think, to pick, you know, from a political standpoint, uh, definitely, um, I saw the, uh, when she introduced him today, you know, it seemed, you know, they were in Philadelphia, you know, um, yeah. and uh, so being in Philadelphia, you know, which is a battleground state, you know, I thought that was smart when they introduced the vice, you know, the guy that's going to, you know, that's running for vice president. And uh, so he, um, you know, it, he he projected himself as a leader. You know, I like I say I don't know a whole lot about him. I've heard of him before being a governor of Minnesota, but you know, a lot of his policies and things like that. You know, I understand the state of Minnesota. You know, for years, you know, there's always been uh, a type of voter in Minnesota. Uh, you know, that type. You know, but anyway, I think he's representative of. Uh, people in that region, you know, like, uh, like he said, the union, uh, the, I saw the UAW, uh, union, uh, the head of the union, for the UAW, one of the unions, my daddy was big in, um, he's, when they were talking to him, you know, he was talking about, uh, that he support, you know, he hopes that Walt's get it because of the fact that he's a strong union guy. And when I saw that, you know, I said, yeah, I, I, that that made me think that he's got a good shot due to that, you know, because the union uh, represents the families. And, uh, you know, the, in that region, you know, um, you know, although a lot of the auto plants and different things have been sold out overseas and things like that, but still in those those blue collar working battleground states, they still you know, unions are strong in those areas and, you know, they've been weakened some to a certain degree, but uh, somebody like that who stands up. So I think that the families respect that. And um, he seemed like a down to earth guy, you know, to, you know, the way he presented himself, it seemed like a, uh, uh, like a, uh, you know, a community family guy was a football coach and all that kind of stuff was a teacher, a grassroots kind of guy, even had one of his players when he was six, you know, said, you know, spoke highly of him, you know, how he helped him when he was about 16 years old. And so people, he's relatable, you know, and people can relate to him. So I thought that was, you know, after further review, because I did think Shapiro was going to get it, you know, just for whatever reason, you know, after, you know, doing your research, you kind of pick and choose and say, and I thought Shapiro a while back, I said, he'll probably get picked. However, um, so the guy, I think he's going to be a big challenge, uh, you know, although Kamala's the one that's uh, running for president, but oh. but adding him to the ticket, um, that's just, that's, that's, you know, it's just, you know, it's, you know, the VP has a big part in this election. You know, a lot of elections, we know that, you know, they'll pick anybody and in, in, because it's about. The, but this time to get her over the hump, because we know how they feel about us, especially black women trying to become president. 
you know, she 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 brought him in and and that was just a brilliant move. And then um, you know, on the other side of the coin, you know, I always say, you know, if Trump was just to shed his mouth back in the day, you know, Trump would probably do flip-flops into the White House because, you know, people have drank, you know, drank the Kool-Aid and 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 go for the okie doke and whatever you want to call it. And uh like when he won you know, the last time he had won. And, uh, you know, a lot, he was actually, after that, um, you know, Biden got in there, of course. But then, you know, again, there's another election coming up. People are tired of Biden or, you know, of course, the social media, whatever, they start, you know, using it as a weapon or a, a, a tactic to try to tear down so we can rebuild up this person and people are mesmerized and impressionable and easily influenced by a lot of in a lot of ways. And so they start changing their minds. And I've noticed that a lot of black people started trying to, you know, not a lot, but, you know, the let the media tell it, you know, a lot of blacks started going toward Trump. But what I'm saying is, which people can vote for whoever they want to vote for. However, I'm saying is by you uh, being, a, you know, you magnetizing people towards you at the same time, you you pushing people away from you by the rhetoric and the foolishness uh, that you present to the people. You know, you, you look at, you know, another very important state that's in this election is Georgia. And, uh, you know, he's down there bad mouthing Governor Kemp, who's a Republican. Little Brian, you know, he's a poor, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a very average governor and all these things putting him down. And, you know, so it's like he's self destructive, you know. So, what's, you know, so not only is he a, a, a consummate narcissist, he's, he, he's, he's got some serious psych issues when, you know, it's like you have a, a death wish or uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, you, masochistic or whatever you want to call it, you know, in terms of, you know, wh why, why do you uh, self-destruct like that? You know, so that's that's not appealing to a lot of people. And, and it's, it's, it's a sad commentary at the same time. They try to talk about Joe Biden, how his diminished his cognitive di diminishment and things like that. And how can his family let him get up there Well, Joe was a tough guy and he think he can do it or whatever. And I, you know, so I understand the space he was coming from, but on the other side of the coin, you know, who's talking to this fool over here, how he continues to, to, to talk all this ridiculous rhetoric. And then the guy that he pulled in, he's almost just as bad as him, you know, talking about these single women and no childless women and uh, cat women and all this kind of stuff, you know? So anyway, I'm just looking at it all. We, it just, there's no room for that, that division and, and, and ridiculousness, you know, as far as I'm concerned in this political construct, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we still live here and there, there, you know, even if, uh, if there's lesser of evils or whatever, you know, cause we can look at it in different ways, but, uh, I sure, I, I, I hope that this fool uh, go on about his business and, and call it a day. So they got to move him out of here. They got to push him to the side and forever, uh, you know, and then let's move forward, you know? So I just wanted to mention that, but that's just, it's, it's, it's beyond belief, the foolishness that, and the people who, who go along with it, you know, I work around these folks and, uh, everybody wants, everybody usually have a conversation, but when, you know, they, they don't really talk about that. You know, they don't talk about how foolish And then when you, when I, uh, provoke a conversation with one of them, they are uh, they 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 defend him and they say, oh, I don't believe that. You know, it's kind of like and I'm going to stop, you know, kind of like the election. They, they had all the Republicans check the votes and you, you lost, man. But then you talk to these foolish people I work with. Well, you know, they they do fix things and, you know, they just don't want to believe it. That just tells me uh, the the state of the uh, mental uh uh union that we live in people we got some sick sick folks walking around some people with some serious psych issues okay but anyway that's all i gotta say you know so i'm glad that she picked old boy and uh hopefully they can close the deal and we can move forward and uh go from there all right all right good announcement brother sharara you there sharara yeah yes i'm here my brother well, we're talking about we're talking about the election of uh, 
I mean, the uh, nomination of uh, Kamala Harris and her new uh, person and overall perspective of what you think about uh, the current uh, position of the election? Well, it's a game, you know? <laughs> it's a game. It's a Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, to see who's going to win the Super Bowl championship. It's a political championship. It's been this way before Emancipation Proclamation. And it's this way today. I have to look at it from the standpoint of who I really am. I'm a black man in America. And nothing has really changed other than what I have forced into change. Mm -hmm. What I have caused to come into change, what I have influenced as a people to come into change, if we had done nothing, nothing would have changed. Mm -hmm. When we look at the vote, what is it that we're giving up? We're giving up our individual and personal authority, which is our energy to a particular political party headed by a particular candidate who is functioning based upon a policy that is not established by the individual candidate, but established by the party. Now, neither party supports or respects the black vote. That is an absolute fact. I do not have to give details. And, well, go check this or check. I don't have to do that. Every black individual who is a voter ought to research the history of both of these parties and judge for themselves by doing a critical analysis and research on each part. It's not about the candidate. It's not about the candidate. We talk about one of the big things I hear him talking about is Kamala Harris black. Well, black folks need to go and check that research. Well, she's black because her father's Jamaican and her mother is Indian. Well, they need to understand what it means if you black and you Jamaican or what it means to be Jamaican. I'm a Jamaican. And when you say her father is Jamaican, you're not saying nothing. You're not saying he black. Because you have black Jamaicans and he is not that. He is not that. You have Chinese Jamaican. You have Indian Jamaican, which they call coolie. And then you have the mixture. And in Jamaican society, there is a racial energy. And you have those that are mixed. Let's say you get a black Jamaican go mixed with a, with a, 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 a white Jamaican. You have white Jamaicans too. And they have a child. They always consider that child more superior to the black Jamaican. The black Jamaican is on the bottom. It's like Indian society in India, where you have the Sudras as the untouchable, the lowest caste of people. That's what it, that's what Jamaica set up like. So when you hear the media tell you he, her father is Jamaican and her mother's Indian and all of this, you, those who are going to vote, they need to go ahead and, and, and check this woman out and check her out thoroughly with a fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. They need to do that because mm -hmm. they're, they're not doing that. They have always, my experience in America is they have always split the black vote between the Republicans and the Democrats, and they fight for that vote. And whoever black people vote for, that's who the president is going to be. Mm -hmm. So what black people need to do is wake the hell up, stop acting like one of these parties is going to do something for them. None of them going to do nothing for them that they ain't did already. And they're going to continue to move until we put the foot on their daggone neck. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the vote again, you got to ask yourself, 
am I giving my vote to this party? Is that party reliable? Is, is, does, is that a reliable party? Can I rely on this party to deliver specific things to me that I have to uh, like, a, like a itemize? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hey, now, do, do, do this party or that party, uh, are, are they available to me? Mm -hmm. And have they made themselves available to me in the past? All the years and generations I've been voting since Emancipation Proclamation, since the Voting Rights Act. And finally, is this party serviceable? Okay. In other words, we're mm -hmm. talking about reliability, availability, and serviceability. Okay. That's it. What? Okay. You okay. want to say? No, we're going to get back to you on that party stuff in a minute. I, I, we got to get other people in. Ahi? Uh, yeah, sure. Detroit? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Ahi? Uh, how, Detroit? How you doing, brother? You're on mute. Ahi? Uh, you still on mute. There you are. Uh, I'm doing well, brother. I'm just... uh. I think everybody have excellent points to make on this. It's, it's uh, I'm just uh, taking in, taking in the information, and at this particular time, I, I don't have a lot to say about this. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, brother Rashiki. Interesting what everybody is saying. Um, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm just recognizing the type of energy that's coming and how the media is, it has a great influence on, on a lot of people, how the stage productions have a, a, a lot of, um, a lot of um, influence. And, you know, and, and if you, you know, I know that people on here particularly do research and, and it's learned individuals. But most people are going to go with the wave of the energy. And what Kamala Harris and this new guy brought, the Walsh guy, they brought some uh, a, a particular energy to that, that stadium because I checked it out and they had all these people there. So if the if that trend continues, then you 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 should see Kamala Harris as the as the president, and if it and if that if Trump somehow win with all of what's going on, then you know that you can then you can talk about being fixed and all of that, and mm -hmm. uh, you know things happening be, behind the door that we don't know about. I mean, logically speaking, it, with with what's presented. Yes, Kamala Harris should get the to get the victory with her and the guy Walsh with his his storybook life and all of that. That's uh, creating this type of energy at this particular moment. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I haven't did any research on him. I just know a few things about Kamala as far as what I'm hearing through our venue that we put on every week, and I, you know, I've saw a few things before about her and Willie Brown and how she did this and did that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically spectating and then I have to have a, make a decision when it comes time to vote. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just checking it out. Well, that's good. That's good. I appreciate what's been said, if I understand correctly. I, I, I want to say, I, we really appreciate the, the comments, and I really want to say Sante Sana to my brother, Ronnie Roberts, for checking in and giving us his wealth of knowledge. I have a slightly different perspective. I think that um, the fact that Biden, who was a Democrat at that time, chose a Black woman for vice president, um, he was in the Democratic Party. He chose a Black woman to be on the uh, Supreme Court. So it does pay off. He gave credit when he won to black people. He said, without the black community, this would not be a victory and I got your back. 
And he started doing things to help black people. They just gave, as, as he, as when he turned it over to Aunt Kamala, he gave the black farmers billion, $2 billion to be divided among them and other minorities to farm. He couldn't do that while he was running for office. He did it going out the door, and he could probably do some other things. Because he's probably bitter because the white folks told him, you know, pressured them to get out. But at the same time, he's, he said, God, you're back. It does matter to vote. You don't vote for the person. You vote for your conditions, the conditions that allow you to continue your struggle. Who best under what condition will do it? Kamala got issues. All of them got issues, as Shira was saying, as uh, 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 Ronnie said. All of them got issues. But, you know, you're not voting for the less of the evil. You're voting for your best condition to continue your struggle and get your agenda high. Right, you got Cornell West running. Some people say he should drop out and endorse camera. Opposition from the culture center is no. Stay in until the end and keep holding their feet, keep uh, holding them accountable and, and, and getting your issues on and speaking truth to the people from your concept because you were the one that started the movement of freedom and justice. That was the name of your party and your platform, Cornell. Now, Cameron's doing it. And you got to look at the the issues that we've gotten under the Democratic Party. Of course, it was a Dixiecrat. Malcolm said that. He said they both dogs. They both belong to the canine factory. One's a wolf and one's a fox. We don't doubt that. But we live in this country. And so, therefore, we got to fight for better conditions, even if you want to leave it. You know, you know, even if you want to go to Africa, Jamaica, wherever, and live somewhere else, that's fine. But for those that are here, you got to fight for better conditions and better situations to, to move your liberation struggle. A camera, the first black woman to be the, uh, San Francisco. Uh, 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 well, first she was a prosecutor. Then she was a... Uh, a district attorney. Then she she would, became the first black woman attorney general for California. And then she became the first black woman senator. This was all under conditions and black people participation. Everybody think we don't vote, but we vote for the, those that vote. For black people that vote, close to eighty to ninety percent of them vote, and they vote. And, you know, you can't, as, as in Shara say, they, they fight for it. But it's mostly Black people the Democrats. And so, therefore, we are fighting to get issues on our agenda, reparation, uh, better justice, a better situations with regard to police. So you got you to gotta think about that. You can't just um, divorce yourself from the actions from a political this is a political country. White folks fight and kill. You have insurrection to be in power. Biden didn't want to give it up. It's too much juice up there in the national market and money and all kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it's just a beautiful thing to see black people, especially those black women who started the movement, raise $1.5 million the day after she was uh, endorsed by uh, Biden to be the nominee. 1.5, this black women, and they started it. Then the black men came out with 1.2 million. And then <laughs> the Ch Asians came out. Then the Chinese, I mean, um, the white dudes came out. White women came out, raised 11 million. This was a movement to try to, you know, these are white people voting and giving them money. And and that that don't mean nothing to me. I don't care about that. What I care about is that there's a movement to get this sister in the presidency. Now she now ain't about is she Indian? She went to a black school. She's in a black sorority. She uh, 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 did everything she did was black. She never said she wasn't black. You understand? She never. I've never heard her say she's biracial and all that. You understand that she just you know she. She was dating black men, you understand, and all that. But, you know, you, you got a lot of black women that marry white women, um, men. The Serena sisters, 
Uh, I mean, I mean, black men marrying white women, you know. I, I only, I ain't in the bedroom watching. I'm into how they conduct themselves in the political life. And so far, she has, if, if she wins, Trump's finished on the national scene. He will be able to deal with districts and, and threaten local politicians with his little old crew and, and primaries. But if he lose to a black woman, that's a peaceful revolution, as Malcolm said, a nonviolent revolution, because he would not be able to go anywhere Absolutely. and talk about a national election. And then so there's uh, so many positives about her selection. She couldn't choose Shapiro. I don't care about Pennsylvania. She, she was already winning in Pennsylvania. The point is, is that he was against the students' demonstration. He was pro-Israelis killing them people and wouldn't call it genocide. He would, uh, he, he did a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, Cameron was against. And so, you know, he's a good, I mean, he, he's, he's hustling for, he spoke at the, at the meeting today and he gave a strong message. But at the same time, the same thing with the dude from Arizona. He was criticizing the, the administration about the border policy, you know? So yeah, Walt was uh, more progressive, even though he's in a wilderness, out there in the wilderness, you know, uh, probably eating possum and everything else, you know, like Sarah Palin used to eat the alligator chili. But at the same time, <clears throat> I think we're in good shape with this movement. This is a movement, man. When you see 16,000 people, 12,000, 10,000 people show up, Biden never could get that kind of action. You understand? So I'm going to let y'all make closing statements, but I just want to say, brother, uh, this is a black movement, and black people are turning out. They're giving up money, and you say, where the money coming from? Yeah, some big corporations are going to give money, but most of her money is coming from $10, $5 people. You understand? Those were black women giving up their money, their shopping money, their wig buying money, and everything to get, <laughs> to get, to get that girl in. In <laughs> so you got to give praise and thanks to black people for stepping up. You oh. understand? Even if it's just for inspiration, aspirations, and hope. But without hope, you might as well not pray. <laughs> you understand? Because that's all praying is, is hoping. You understand? <laughs> so we look, we look good. And I think she got a good shot. And I think if enough people vote and people get out and look like it's going to be, in those battle states, and even in the Constitution, that you have to have an electoral college. That's some white folks fix the, the fix the game, as Sherrod would say, that only white people would choose the president. The Republicans had lost the majority vote for the last five elections, but they win those uh, battleground states: Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Pennsylvania. You understand? Sometimes Florida is in it, and, and some in Arizona, and, and you know, and and I'm gonna tell you, it looks good because the issue of the abortion issue, the freedom of jo choice, justice issue, and the anti-Trump issue. There's a lot of people against that guy Absolutely. in his own party. They got Republicans uh, raising money for Kamala, as well as starting a movement, Republicans for camera. You understand? And even though no, uh, 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 um, the, the, the guy from uh, Virginia, he had to endorse her. Uh, the one that wouldn't vote for the uh, um, uh, uh, get rid of the filibuster. Uh, Mention. He had to endorse her. So she's on the move in my opinion. So uh, Ronnie, you have special guest. Go ahead and you close out with your statement. Um. Good points made by all. Um, you know the 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 brother brother uh, Thomas um, examining the the the, the people sure. and and making a good choice. That that's that's absolutely absolutely right. Uh, black people have been. Both political parties have taken us for granted. 
particularly the Democratic Party, because we generally vote 80 to 90 percent Democratic. Be that as it may, the choice, if we don't vote for the Democratic Party, is Donald Trump. That that can't be for any any self respecting black man to to rationalize, well, I don't like this about Kamala, I don't like this about Tim Waltz, I don't like this about the Democratic Party, how they've ignored us. Well, any embrace that we've got, any forward progress that we made has come on the banner of the Democratic Party. It's just that simple. It's just, and whether it's Democrats or Republicans, the other side is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is hated by most white folks in this country, quiet as it's kept. Donald Trump is a product of the Electoral College. That's the only thing that gives him any shot at being the president, the Electoral College, as, as Rod just brought up. The popular vote is already in Kamala Harris's back pocket, but it's about winning the Electoral College, and that's winning those Midwestern states. Um, this this can be done and it has to be done. Any anybody any 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 man or woman that's a that's a decent. He's guy. muted or something. Okay. Um, what? Is something wrong? No, go ahead, Ron. Okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. I mean, any alternative that would make me think that Donald Trump would be worth a vote. I just can't rationalize how anybody can come up with that. Uh, you got to understand, he's got a, a block of MAGA people who are 30%. That's 30%. Now, of that 30%, they represent really less than half of the Republican Party as a whole, but the Republican Party as a whole is drugging the support in Donald Trump because they have nobody else to run. Trust me. Donald Trump would not be the nominee. Every senator in the in, in the United States, every senator, the 49 senators that they have, I guarantee you, 40 of them don't want Donald Trump to be the president with all of the baggage that he brings and the way he bashes them for that matter. Donald Trump has done more harm to Republicans than he's done to Democrats ever. All of the people who testified against him in those hearings, those are Republicans, those are Democrats. All of the people that he lambasts for the most part, except when he's campaigning, are Republicans, which he calls rhinos. This man is so self-destructive, so sick, that he destroys his own people. I guarantee his, com his, his campaign people, Susie Wiles and what is his name, Ray Lasavita, when he went to the NABJ conference, they didn't even want him to go, the National Association of Black Journalists. They did not want him to go because it was a trap for him. And they know he couldn't shut his mouth. They know he couldn't restrain himself. They had they were running a campaign, a really slick campaign for him. But he messes up and and because no one can control him. His campaign managers can't control him. He went in there and made an ass out of himself, bringing up that is she black. But what does that even matter? She identifies as black. And what is that? What do they say? You got one drop of black blood in you. I don't care if you're black Jamaican or black whatever. You black. As far as the world is concerned, you know you can have a caste system here. They have caste systems in India. We got caste systems here in America to a degree. We got light skinned blacks. We got dark blacks. We got all kinds of stuff. We're all a big amalgam, a, a motley of different people. But Donald Trump ain't an answer. You can slam Kamala Harris all you want to. You can slam Tim Walsh. Tim Walsh, Minnesota. In Minnesota, um, jails, jail population for blacks is three times the national average. Hmm. Tim Walsh wasn't on the right side of the um, of of the COVID thing. He had a strange approach to COVID. Tim, I mean, no politician is perfect. Kamala for sure. But some are just so imperfect that the alternative is just unacceptable. What it would do to the country as a whole, not just from a Democratic-Republican standpoint, 
But, you know, this clown has diminished our stature in the world. We need to come back. We need to get respect. We need to get civility back into it. You got to understand that 70, 74 million people voted for Donald Trump in the last election. I'm not so concerned about Donald Trump because his old ass is going to die and go to jail. Just like the rest of us 78-year-old folks are. He's passe. I'm concerned about those 74 million people who voted for him, who held their noses. And of that 74 million, the probably 35 to 40 million who held their noses and voted for him because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Guarantee, most of white folks in the country don't care for Donald Trump. But mm. he certainly is going to get most of the white folks vote simply because he will retain white supremacy. What it's all about. Make America great again is a slogan that's all about the retention of white supremacy. Great again, they want to go back to the 40s and the 50s where it wasn't no question, where we had segregation, where we had separate but so separate but equal, which is the biggest lie I've been told. There cannot be separate without equal, without equal funding, as we well know. But they want to take us back, all the way back to the days of Reconstruction and we can we got to get past what hangups we might have with the Democratic Party. We got to get past what hangups we might have with Kamala Harris. You say national elections are all about the lesser of two evils. In some cases, that is the case. But Donald Trump, I mean, he's, he's a, just a horrible human. Just an absolutely horrible human. We can't have him back in office running this country again, running this country down. One other point I'd like to make, and it's not so much about the president's election. You were talking about the Palestinians. Rod, I kind of differ with you a little bit on that because I don't know if you're aware of the fact that Hamas is the one that's running things over there. And half and 43% of the Palestinians, only 43% max approve of Hamas. Hamas came in and occupied their country and just took over. Now, they're all Arab peoples. They're all Muslim people. But just like here in America, there's many, you know, there's many Christians and and of the Christian faith on the right side as there is the left side. The right side is just taking Christianity hostage because of the abortion issue and supporting the Antichrist, which is Trump. And these peoples. The people in Palestine where they're being slaughtered are not for Hamas, the majority of them. Their leaders are because they've been empowered by money, privilege, and not being beheaded. But the, most of the people in Palestine don't support Hamas whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Not whatsoever. Okay. But that's that's a but it's genocide that's going on there. How do you what do you do? You think you can go into a country? kill up 1,200 people, and you think Israel, who could wipe them off the map tomorrow, I know you do understand that, right? They could take they're them out doing tomorrow. It. They're already doing it. They're doing doing it they could, they could, well, all they got to do is put your bomb. They could take them out tomorrow. They could take out the whole Middle East, for that matter. Really? Not without America. Not without America. They, uh, Israel and America. America. They, who in the Middle East has an atomic bomb? Who? Uh, no. Israel. No, they're not going to. They're, they're not, not going to do that. Atomic. They don't need to. They could military. Because it was spread. It, it, was, no, it was spread in that country too. Yeah, but, they, yeah, it, it would. It would. They can't yeah. do that. They can't. They never can you use uh, atomic weapons. But mm-hmm. they have the conventional means with conventional warfare. Now they have to kill. They'd have to kill a bunch of women and children. But they could take them out tomorrow. Yeah, but that that, that that that's not that's not going to happen. But because geo, geopolitically, that's not expedient, and they will maybe, lose the support of the West if they do that. Well, I'm gonna call you, Ronnie, and we're gonna have a deep discussion. Yeah, on we, we need to talk about because this, but I I don't think that uh, you do know that, the, but you do acknowledge, Rob, that the Palestinians as a whole don't support Hamas because Hamas uh, has killed I disagree with many that. many I disagree. Palestinians. I disagree with that's that. The, I, the, the I, that that's not by my good. info. But we yeah. go, I'm going to call you off air and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. All right. 
Brother Ahi, really? you got it. Brother Ahi, uh, Machinda, your, your turn. Yeah, to talk yeah, about. Uh, yeah I, I do. Um, I just want to say, you know, I was listening to Brother Chihuahua earlier, you know, and how what he presented, you know, and, you know, I'm in agreement, you know, with what he's saying as far as, you know, people have been, Black people in America in particular, and in the world, you know, have been, you know, been taken for granted and have been, you know, uh, under struggle, you know, by the oppressor, you know, you know, the power structure. I look at, you know, like I said, Israel, that's uh, I look at Israel as an army base for America, you know, it ain't but an army base. That's the way I look at it. But I don't I'm not going there tonight. But, you know, so uh, these air, these these weapons and of mass destruction have been placed all over the world strategically, uh, you know, for control of the world and fear and among other things have been used to, uh, you know, to, to to put every, you know, they, they put try to put the populations under fear and, and some people they become martyrs in their own country and they ain't having it, you know? Uh, you know, I happen to live over here in America. So yeah, I don't want no bomb come like my dad used to say, long as they don't come over here. Like, you know, in this particular town, he understood it on another level, but he said, it's out of our control. This thing has been built up before we were born, you know? So we were born into this struggle. And so, uh, you know, what's happening in the Middle East and different things like that in Africa, the, the, the Chinese buying up property in Africa and all over the world and different things like that. So it's it's a it's a lot going on. So in America, here we are in, in, in the wilderness of America uh, growing up and we just trying to survive. We're trying to find, a, find you know, have a have a home, have have some transportation. And, and then, you know, so the whole conversation was being politically active. You know, of course, I used to be one of those folks and uh, I can be some time because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to be all right. But there are people at different levels, different educational mindsets uh, that don't understand. People go voting for different people and don't understand why they're voting for them. They don't even understand the issues. You know, they don't even read, you know, when you go to the poll and they have a list of things there, they don't even understand the policies that they're voting for. That's and, and the person that put them up to voting for it might not even understand it. They might be paid off. I know all about that. I grew up around that. And and and, and people going there voting and things like that for a, an agenda that they don't even understand. They just getting paid off. So the, all in all, you know, you go back doing the Black Panther movement, you know, Malcolm X, go back to Garvey, go back to whoever, Frederick Douglass. Politics have always been involved in 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 in, in the mainstream of things in in, the, in this country in particular and all over the world. You know, what is politics? Politics is just a. Uh, it's it, it, it's it's a movement. It's a it's a it's a it's an agenda. It's a it's a lot of things. You guys understand that. So what I'm saying is. It's all about making choices and how we want things to be. And so, uh, you know, so we can play semantics, you know, about politics or this or that. But at the end of the day, most people, it's on purpose by design that we don't have the education to understand what we may need to vote for. It, most people aren't financial literate. But, uh, they, they, in other words, I've been like studying real estate and the stock market, you know, and, and real estate a long time ago, understanding it, but the stock market. And I'm like, wow, this is a trip. And I'm watching how these companies manipulate the stock market, these one percent, one percenters that that control the stock market. So what I'm saying is most people just get up and go to work and, and, and make a living and go home. You know, they don't understand how to, you know, from an economic standpoint to take yourself to another level. So. Again, that's for a whole nother show and a whole nother time. At the end of the day, um, so you you know, when you hear not just Kamala Harris, not just uh Biden, not just it uh Project tw uh, 2025, that's a real agenda. That's something that's written by the heritage uh, you know, the heritage uh organization, 
ex extreme conservative people that this is an agenda that they're trying to uh, put out there. And Louisiana is a microcosm of uh, it, it's being played out because there's a super majority in our government down here. You have the, you know, you have these extremes and these are MAGA type people, you know, uh, and, and, and this on cruise control, the governor, they, they are taking, you know, most, mo the, proportionally, we, you know, brothers make up the masses of the jailhouse and the prison system. And down here, they're losing their good time. There's no more parole, all that kind of stuff. Read about it. The you know they've passed it in record time without even community, uh, in you know com community say so. Nobody's you know you know no no town meetings to talk about it. He's pushing this agenda. So that's on a greater scale. That that's on a national scale. If you look at it, they're talking about the ed uh, defunding public education in this in this in most states. You have a right to go to school K through twelve. Now, I know in this state, they, they they well, they haven't had the convention yet, the constitutional convention. They want to take education out of the constitution, the, the, the guaranteed right to get a K through 12 education. So you can go to private school or homeschool. Well, people on this call who got some sense, they might say, well, that's great. You know, and I'm not I'm just, you know. Uh, I, you might say, well, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll get some of that money and, and, and send my kid to that private school down the street because they go on to Harvard or wherever they want to go. Well, most people don't have transportation. A lot of people don't. So they're not going to be going to these private schools to, to take advantage of these. This change It's supporting the, 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 the rich white folks in, in most cases. And so what I'm saying is that's uh, that's a movement all over the country. I think Arizona, it was in Arizona. It's another state out there. I recently uh, heard about, but anyway, they're pushing this. They push. They're pushing this agenda. There's a called educate Ed Choice Education Choice Ed Choice. They got that company out there. They're out there uh, lobbying for this uh, like privatization. You know. So at the end of the day, privatization is not new. To, they want they privatize the prison systems. People, how, you, how do you privatize the prison system? You 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 know whack and hut. Um, uh, uh, correctional corporations of America. I can name a whole bunch of them that are uh, they privatizing these prisons. Somebody's on the board. They they making money out of how many people they lock up. That's the commodity. Let who's in the jailhouses. So they want to, social security. Ain't nobody giving you no uh for uh no no no. You're not getting a, a pension anymore on these jobs anymore. You're getting four hundred one k's controlled by the uh, you know by the stock market. You don't understand the stock market, but you, you know. So what I'm saying is they revamping the whole system, and I'm not saying that but we're caught up in the system and and it's the it's the struggle does continue and it's like we so now rob mentioned that they got this black woman at the supreme court that's great because guess what they get enough of them on there they get enough of them and they get the trumps in there and they get the super majority in the senate in the house your ass would be back in slavery or, or, or close to it. It is possible. Oh, it ain't going to happen again. Well, they start, they chipping away and taking your rights away. And, you know, but they put these hot button items like abortion and gun rights and all of that. But really and truthfully, it ain't even about all that. It's about, it's about good and evil. And it, and it, and it it's just some evil stuff going down. And that's what America great again is all about. We want to, cause I work with these people and uh, they, 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 oh man, it's terrible. So I just said all that to say that it's happening in Louisiana right now where it's being played out and they trying to do it on a national level and a global level, you know? So, and, and, and again, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Black Panthers, all them, you know, they showed up with their guns. Where was that? In San Francisco, Oakland? They was with the, they had, they said, hey, I got a right to carry my gun too. But if you had the laws to say, and to have that uh, legal immunity, hey, if them niggas show up, shoot all of them. If, them, if, they, if they shoot, if they show up, shoot them. And, and, and nothing going to happen to you. Trump is trying to make it like that. They kill that woman in an apartment in there. You know, they doing all kind of stuff, you know. But anyway, they're projecting this, letting us know that this is what we're trying to do. So that's why, you know, I say what I say and I'm I'm politically involved because but through my message and through my doings. But uh, yeah, but I agree that we a lot of us are ignorant and we just being taken advantage of, you know, but still we can't we can't turn a blind eye 
on on the situation because it you know, it can get worse for the ones that are conscious and and you become incarcerated in your own situation. So anyway, I'm done. All right, but you know, it's good. <laughs> you was on one, we'll talk, brother Sharara. Hmm? Brother Sharara. Yes, my brother. Are you there? Yes, I am. Can you okay, hear me? <laughs> Yeah, we gotta make it a little shorter so he can go down and ride speed and me and we <laughs> the Uncle Glenn, yeah. Chirara. Yeah, once again, you know, I think we're just experiencing black paranoia in this twenty first century. <laughs> we're not looking at the big picture of what's going on in the rest of the black world, but we're focused on white people. A truly free man, because remember, it was not black people or Negroes or slaves that we were referred to as during the time of Emancipation Proclamation. We were considered free men. That was the statement, free men. And what we are experiencing right now is a sociological and a political experiment. That didn't start with Camilla Harris or it didn't start with Donald Trump and it's not going to end with neither one of them. At the end of the day, all that we have seen going on within the modern history okay. is nothing more than a vicious attempt by the marauders, also known as colonialists, to steal the black people's value and worth. And today is still happening. We need to begin to understand that a truly free individual, a freeman, is self-determined, is self-sufficient, and self-reliant, and is not responsible for the education of no other man. A free man is responsible for his own education. So we must ask ourselves, like Carter G. Woodson said, those who know better won't do better. This is the problem mm -hmm. that we're having right now. Because why aren't black people voting as a huge block, neither Republican nor Democrat, but for that which presents them with their dignity, presents them with their value? Why are we allowing others to de de designate what our values are? Why are we settling for trinkets like people being put into the Supreme Court because they're black and so that's a trinket. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris saying she's black or whatever the hell she calls herself. I saw her birth certificate one time and on a birth certificate it said Caucasian. So oh. which one is it? And I don't really care. And I don't really care because it's irrelevant. Because at the end of the day, the wise man said, we shall see. The very thing that we are running from is the very thing that we are going to receive. So when we think that we are going to get some kind of uh, placebo, I, it's a placebo as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen anything else within this political system. It has all been a placebo to the Black people from the mm -hmm. French Revolution on up to now. So okay. what I'm saying is, please, Black people, Stop with the paranoia. We ain't going back to slavery. That's not going to freaking happen. There's nobody going to bring us back to no enslavement. We will do that for ourselves. We will enslave ourselves. But we must free okay. the mind. Free mm -hmm. the mind. That's Use the mind. Right. Connect the mind with the brain. Free ourselves. Teach ourselves. Build for ourselves. Don't wait on no other people to do that. Unite. Come together. Stop being scared. Stop separating ourselves yeah. in Democrats and Republicans. Stop that. That's all I got to yeah. say, man. Okay. It well, got me heated up, bro. Yeah, yeah well, I appreciate what you're saying. But, uh, yeah, I hear you, brother. <laughs> Most people don't put their race down on their birth certificate. They just got born. It's somebody else that did it. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> it's the birth certificate. I, I can't. Huh? Yeah. Your mother and your father yeah, your put it there, brother. Your, father, your mother and your father put it there, bro. Your mother and your father put it there, bro. The state of Oklahoma what, whatever. my first but she didn't. color. My mom and my dad yeah. didn't do that. 
The state yeah. of Oklahoma did that. Yeah. My birth certificate right now, I can yeah. show it. And the county. Yeah, it's colored. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And and uh, Ahi, are you there? Well, yes. Can you hear me here? Yeah. Can you hear me? Detroit. Well, I I, I think it's uh we're we're all in the uh we're the, in the age where it's the cult of personality. And um Absolutely. the brother was saying uh, uh a little earlier that the dummy dummy down of America is is successful. Um Trump is not on the moon making up this stuff. He's a reflection of a group. He is a spokesperson of a group. I work with white folks too. Now up in Michigan, we're as bad as down in Louisiana. You know, they come in and to our capital carrying guns, daring the state and the troopers to go ahead and make a move. We can shoot it up right now. Yeah, but is. um uh uh my point on the Middle East, the brother was saying something about Palestine. You know, the the, the Israel is not altogether everybody don't agree with the Zionists over there, the Orthodox, the religious and the, the uh the young moderate people there, they they don't believe that Israel should be a state. So the same issues that that uh, Palestine is going with the differences that they have going on with the differences in the leaders and and the different political philosophies, uh, uh, Israel has going on, also. It's just a, a state of organized chaos over there. But um, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's that's all I have to say uh, on that. You know, I think the brothers have covered have, have covered this well, and uh, tonight was really. Really uh, informative for me. All right, then, good. Uh, he, what about mm -hmm. you, Rasha King? Well, we just, I'm a, uh, you, you got more to say, Rob, because I'm just going gonna to do the pause. <laughs> I Let just want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of good black organizations. I'm a member of a lot of them. They're doing a lot of philanthropic things, and they do do self education. I When I graduated from college, with a BA in sociology, I became a professor. I had to re-educate myself to teach black studies. I had to, I mean, I became a professor of black studies at 22. And I had yeah. to get all these books and start learning because I had to teach it. And I had to do it every year that I was there. Yeah, you find out something new. I didn't know about Dr. Yaka ben, ben Yakana. I didn't know about all the great writers that have been written books at that time, because when I went through school, they never even showed those books. But once I got in black studies, then I found black bookstores. And I found the effort. We started political parties from the lines of, 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 of that's where the Black Panthers got their name from. That was a political party down in, in the South, as well as Fannie Lou Hamer. She started a black political party. It's hard to sustain it without money and the sabotage of this country to break them up. And, you know, we naive think, oh, you can just go and have unity. That's why Becky J. Hoover started Cointel Pro to make us to divide and conquer. That's why the Native American couldn't unite. That's why the, the Asians are divided and they were fighting each other. Divide and conquer is a, is a, is a, is a philosophy. But we got people. Uh, that 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 think for themselves like you, Sharara, you think for yourself. You understand? You just wish other people would think for themselves. Brother Rasha Key starting this program. That's out the pages, out the box. Brother Robert, he think for himself. Uh, he think for themselves. Machinda just told you what he thought about it, what's going on. So, you know, there are people that do do things and do do self-education and do try to help others. And, and and it's not that we're not doing nothing. It's just that it ain't on TV. It ain't on the radio. But there are grassroots organizations everywhere working on voting, working on every issue we face, from health. Every week, Russia keeps bringing people in about nutrition, about vegetarian, about healthy eating, about herbs. I mean, you know, I mean, we're trying to educate parents we put it on YouTube, but it's their choice. That's freedom, their choice. You understand? So the struggle continues. I want to thank each and every one of you for such outstanding points. And you know, uh, we, are, we are people, we have diverse thoughts. 
You understand? We're going to always be diverse people. Africa is one of the most diverse countries on the planet. You know, the many communities that they have, the many languages that they have, the diff different economic system, some under colonialism, some is under domination, but some are free. You know, and they just, I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm i am glad that I'm here to bear witness to the struggle of Black people for the future, for the future, for the future children. I'm free. You know, I, I, I'm free. I ain't nobody's slave. But they do have slaves in prison because in the Constitution it says slavery is abolished everywhere except for in prison. And as in Sharis and as Machina say, the majority of Black people are where? In prison. Black men, many black men dominate the prison. Not all of them, because we ain't in it. But that, that, then that's called slave wages, as Rodney always talk about. You understand? You know, slave wages, you know, they make you think you earning something, but you ain't. You ain't, you know, the cost of living has gone up ever since we were little. I mean, when gas was 25 cents, 28 cents for ethyl, and, th and 20, uh, uh, 25 cents for regular. And, you know, I mean, all these people whining because they can't buy Disneyland tickets. But they going to ball games. These, these people are just greedy, man. They whining, oh, the price cost this. But you don't see stadiums empty. You don't see a fun parks. Here. They have the most traveled people. They travel all over the place. But they still whine because the nature of this country that makes it run is greed and envy. If my neighbor gets a big car, I got to get a bigger car. My neighbor get a swimming pool. I got to get a swimming pool. And they drive that instinct in you. But at the Jones. same time, we are conscious people and we're doing good. <clears throat> and we'd be doing more good than we're doing bad. So we're going to invite you in uh, tomorrow. Uh, Roger Key, close us on now. Yeah, tomorrow we have uh, Dr. Rita Yassid, she was on before as Dr. Gall's daughter, the, the acclaimed herbalist out of Compton. He, he uh, moved on and transitioned maybe about two or three years ago, and he he did a, done, did a lot of good for the community with introducing herbs, and and she's uh, following in his footsteps and expanding the business. He's in uh, in Ghana, so we'll see her tomorrow. Right. And I'm looking forward to it. Appreciate everybody that showed up tonight and excellent conversation. And All right, then, brother. We're on the move. We on the move. All them black people that was behind uh Kamala, uh the dead that over ten thousand people there. Hey man, shoot. I'm I'm happy. All right, we'll get back. It's not to everybody right. hey, next Tuesday. We're going to do it again. And, and Brian, I mean, I'm going to be hunting you, brother. <laughs> you ain't got to talk true. about the palace. <laughs> All right. I'll be you, brother. All right. All right. Taking all our pause. We wish all your blessings without number, all good things without end. And may your health and wealth be as long as the rivers flow and as long as the sun shines. Asante Sana. Two thousand dollars. Right on, brothers. All right. right on.